programme. You'll be pleased about that description. Spectacular. I certainly was, yes. It was a very good night for us. And I must say, it exceeded my own expectations by some considerable margin. For those people who say you're a protest vote, um, hand on heart, if instead of UKIP on the ballot paper it had said none of the above, would the result have been much different? No, we just, people just actually stayed at home. Yes, you're right in a sense. It's a protest vote in a sense that uh, people just look at the three so-called main parties, uh, they see them as an amorphous mass, they see them as the establishment that have led us really rather badly, and they're looking for something different. But the motivation to go down to the local primary school and put a cross on a piece of paper is that UKIP is offering positive policy solutions, and that's why people vote UKIP. So we should take your policy seriously? I think we should, and I think, you know, the idea that 75% of our laws should now be made in Brussels is something that a good two-thirds plus of this country simply don't want. Well, let's look at the manifesto all of these successful councillors uh, fought on. Your local election manifesto promised your councillors would work to build more grammar schools, improve care for the elderly, oppose cuts to frontline doctors, surgeons, dentists and nurses, introduce local referenda on major planning decisions, improve road maintenance as a priority, mend potholes, upgrade public transport, reopen railway lines, preserve public libraries, abolish red tape, all while not increasing the council tax. What do, you, amb- what do you do on the seventh day? Well, it's pretty ambitious, isn't it? I agree with you. Uh, but, you know, the point about manifestos um, in any form of election is they are aspirations. We're showing where we'd like to get to. Doesn't mean we can do it all in day one, but what it does mean is that UKIP councillors, and now that we've got bridgeheads on county councils up and down the country, will fight for those basic principles. Will they? Well, I jolly well hope they will. Well, you um, say you hope. Otherwise, they've been, otherwise, they've been elected under false pretenses. Well, that's very interesting you say that, because the very local election manifesto I've just been quoting from, you don't even pretend your new councillors have to deliver any of those policies. Here's what it says. UKIP is unique in local government, because we do not whip our councillors to follow party diktats or tow the party line. Instead, we expect our councillors to represent the wishes of their electors at all times. In other words, if your councillors want to ditch everything in the manifesto I've just quoted from to please local people, That's fine by you. That's a commitment you've made. Well, I'm not going to tell those groups, and particularly in the counties where we now hold the balance of power, I am not from a centre going to tell them who they must coalesce with, what they must and must not do. So they're not going to be whipped or governed centrally in that regard. But we will expect them to fight for the principles that UKIP believes in. We will expect them to oppose wind turbine developments. We will expect them to fight for local referendums on key issues where County Hall may well be out of touch with local opinion. Um, And actually, if you think about the way all parties operate in local government, there is a degree of flexibility, and that probably, for local Mm -hmm. government, makes sense. But but yours is the only party. Your manifesto says it's unique in local government that your own councillors don't have to toe the party line. So who knows what we'll get in the end from your councillors? People have issues of conscience in politics, and I certainly... Well, road maintenance? I, I, th- I think people have issues of conscience on lots of things in politics. Public and, libraries? And uh, Well, there's a very good one. I mean, there's a very good case in point. Clearly, libraries are something that are very important to an older generation who perhaps are not into the internet, but for a younger generation, they hardly ever go to libraries because they're, you know, online or they've got kids. I'm not saying it's not it important, is. but surely matters of conscience are going to war or abortion, but public libraries... Well, I think we can all have a different view on whether we think in straightened times uh, that uh, funding libraries at their current level is the right thing to do or not. I, you know, I, I, frankly, we voted for individuals to, uh, to serve on county councils. There are some basic UKIP principles. I expect which, them, which they're entitled to avoid. You're part, you're well, I expect to them that. to conform to some basic UKIP principles, namely that oh. we're campaigning to be an independent country, that we think mass immigration is bad for Britain. But when it comes to doing deals locally and getting what's best for residents, okay. I'm going to give them a fair degree of flexibility. And all of these policies uh, will be paid for, well, there are all sorts of ideas in the manifesto. It talks about uh, capping uh, bonuses and cutting red tape and so on. But one of the stated ways you're going to pay for these local policies is by leaving the EU and saving uh, 53 million a day. Since we're not leaving the EU, how will your new councillors pay for these promises? Well, we will be leaving soon, of course. But not today. Uh, No, not today. They have to get to work tomorrow. Not today, and I agree with that. No, I mean, clearly, 
Um, all county councillors are facing difficult decisions. Um, our feeling as a party is that far too much money is being spent on climate change officers, on diversity training, on interpretation services, and actually on the salaries of senior executives right throughout county council government in this country. And I very much hope and believe that UKIP councillors will get into to County Hall and expose to people just how much money is being wasted on things that we simply do not need. Your manifesto was uncosted. Your own councillors don't even have to follow it. What have people voted for, do you think? Well, we're not going to be controlling county councils. That's the first point to make. The second point to make in terms of budgets at county council level is, of course, they're dependent on what central government gives them. So no party fought these county council elections with costed budgets. That simply isn't possible. Nigel Farage, thank you. We'll talk to the other...